today guys I'm telling you I've uh, I'm given up Welcome to the theater of magic Seven o'clock Eight o'clock Hocus Pocus Nine o'clock magic Ten o'clock Vanquish the chain Eleven o'clock You must break through Midnight Madness Tiger Song Mystifying Unbelievable Spectacular! The Theatre Awake! G'day guys, welcome to the Theatre of Magic. My name is Greg and today guys, I'm telling you, I've, uh, I'm given up. I, I am, I'm giving up. But it's not maybe what, what you think. I'm giving up saying that I'm not picking up any more machines because every time I say that, there seems to be an episode that explains why I'm picking up something else. So I'm just, I'm stopping. I realize I've got a problem, I'm addicted, and there's no stopping it. So there always seems to be some machine comes up, some circumstance, some deal that is just, I don't know, I can't pass it up, guys. So I don't know, what do you think? Have I got a serious problem? I think, uh, well I know my wife definitely thinks I've got a serious problem and uh, and of course regardless we still have a big space issue um, it's the only problem with this hobby is the fact that it just takes up so much room it's not like you know collecting Pokemon figures or something and you just stick up on a shelf every single game that you're getting is taking up like a square meter of your house so I don't know guys, I, I think in a way what's happening is I'm finding sort of better machines. It's not like I'm buying every machine that's available that comes up, it's a better machine that fits in with what I want to get out of them all. And this particular one, if you remember a couple of, um, well if you actually go right back to the start for some of you guys have been watching the channel for some time. There was a, an episode that I did, I was talking about some grail cab, cabinets to pick up and these were, you know, things like Pole Position, uh, Tempest or any sort of vector game and the other one was Outrun. So you can guess guys that yes, this is a pickup today for an Outrun cab. So, you know, Outrun for me I did cover this again buried in an episode quite a while ago now but Outrun was that game where I went to that burger bar in New Zealand and you know out of all the other games that were there and there was standard you know there was still Space Invaders games there there was real basic games um, there was that um, Cosmic um, Alien which is a sort of variation of uh, Galaxian which I played there because I used to love Galaxian but it, you know it had all those sort of 2D games and then this new game came in and it was Outrun and it was actually the stand-up version of Outrun which is what we're going to get today and the graphics on that game it was just blew me away um, Sega of course and you know, the, the pseudo 3D graphics was just unbelievable at the time. I mean, everything else was just 2D basic graphics and then suddenly you got this amazing 3D colorful, sitting in a Ferrari, cruising through the summer beaches. <laughs> it's like Miami or California. Um, it was just incredible and it left such an impression. And if you think about like, the key games that have been released over all the decades we've already talked about Daytona being like the key game well there goes another Sega game right but that was in the 90s and I think if you had to choose a, the best game that had the most groundbreaking graphics in the 80s it's Outrun right so for me actually having the original cabinets for both of those games is just again just ticking those boxes of just having the most you know iconic games that mean a lot to me but also mean a lot 
to you know classic collectors so I didn't think I would have the opportunity to pick up one of these um, a episode after that we talked about a pickup that we did that was when I picked up the Neo Geo and if you recall for those that saw that episode that big shed that that guy had he had an outrun and he had the sit down outrun it wasn't the full deluxe version with the cool fiberglass wheels and all the rest of it it was the one in between but it was really good to see it because um, as cool as it was I looked at it and I thought there's just no way that's going to fit in the theatre um, because you know that, that would have been the ultimate dream would be to get that deluxe version the top version of that because the cabinet is just so looks so cool um, and it's and it's on motion. It's a motion cabinet, so it moves as you uh, as you drive and stuff, which would have been which would have been just totally awesome. But yeah, no way that you can fit that in, guys. Um, so I sort of crossed it off my list in my mind. In fact, I think in that, on that episode I actually said, you know, it's just not going to fit. So I, I, therefore, I just can't can't get it. Um, and that solved a bit of a problem for me <laughs> because I didn't have to sort of seek one down. And I really didn't think I'd find a stand-up version of this because the stand-up is obviously a lot more compact, takes up a normal room of a cabinet, um, but it's a cool-looking cabinet and lots of cool for fiberglass and everything. And again, it's the one that I remember playing. So, so how did this opportunity come up? Well, two episodes ago, you would have seen that we went to Player One, and at Player One, when we looked through all Michael's machines, he. Uh, pointed out that he had an outrun there and it wasn't working and he was going to try and get that working in fact that video we were going to actually carry on and um, try and fix his outrun but anyway as we were talking about it he uh, he said he had an opportunity to buy the sit down the full sit down version not the deluxe but again the one in between um, and get, you know player one has got so much more space than obviously I have and he was considering buying this machine but he didn't he knew he didn't really need two of them you know didn't need the stand up as well so he was sort of like well i don't know what what what, what do i do with this one and i thought well <laughs> what are you what are you buying the other one for so he told me the price of that and that was just an unbelievable price i said i, I actually said to him and in, in just crazy talk i actually said well if you don't want that one <laughs> for that price then i'll buy it you know of course I've already just said it's not going to fit in the house, so I don't know what I would do with that. But anyway, he said, "Well, what I'll do is I'll see if I if I want it." That you know, Michael said he'd, he'd see if he wanted it, and if he did, then he would sell me his stand up, um, and you know, just a great price. Now that's without the board, mind you, because he still needs his outrun board to to plug into the other cabinet because it doesn't come with a, a PCB either. Um, but I think what I may do anyway, I've been looking into this, is that I'll probably have a very cut down version of a multi game running on here, which will run Outrun, um, Outrunners, um, the uh, Drift Out. There's a number of those in that similar sort of genre, which will fit really nicely. So just a subset of those games running on it, um, probably uh, PC emulated. Unless, of course, I can actually get a, a, an outrun PCB, but they're, they're, they're pretty hard to find, uh, at least working. I've had a bit of a brief look. So, so guys, that's the, uh, that's the plan. Anyway, that's the plan. So, yeah, I've definitely given up saying I'm not getting any more machines because we have another one. <laughs> another one. And it's going to be a project because it's not going to be one that I can just uh, plug in. Other, other than that, though, guys, it's all complete. There's no problems with that. And I just need to uh, work out an approach where I can um, hook up the original steering wheel and the the, uh, the shifter and hook it through some um, some emulation to play Outlook. And then look at, you know, maybe I'll, I'll still look out for a PCB set and once I get a working set then I can have that to either flick across to or, you know, just have it as an option. We shall see. So I'm on my way now to Player One to pick it up and uh, once we get it back home guys there's been a, a little bit of a shift round of stuff. <laughs> I actually just went down to the dump uh, earlier this morning and we took a whole lot of old couch pieces that have been cluttering up our main living area and 
I don't know how I managed to do this, guys, but I somehow convinced my lovely wife that I could get D to play a fake Sega Blast out into the main area near the pool table, uh, which is an absolute score because that frees up a space for me to get the out running. So I've actually, I don't know how that happened, but I think getting rid of all the couch pieces that she's been so frustrated about um, and that freed up a lot of space, uh, I've ended up being able to get that one out there. And to be, be perfectly honest, guys, it's out there. We've got a pool table out there, and I think it actually is going to be used a lot more out there. I know my daughter loves um, the flicky game on there, and I'm sure the boys will get into a bit of Mortal Kombat and, and Street Fighter and stuff. If it's out there and you can just turn it on and play it rather than it being in the theatre and, you know, it's sort of dark and dingy in the theatre unless everything is on, and, of course, you know, it's not easy to get everything up and running in there, so just having this one machine out there cool people can play it have fun get more use out of it so it sounds to me because i like to convince myself of these things it sounds to me like a win-win-win situation for everyone involved <laughs> that's, what I'm, that's what i'm telling myself so guys anyway uh we should be at player one soon we should get the uh, outrun loaded up uh, with my son who has generously come to help me today thanks dylan and uh, we shall get it home and get it through the door. So let's get on the road. guys and we're ready to bring it in the theater now of course where is it going to go well the plan is is we're going to move this guy out of here and we're going to put outrun right there and we're going to move that guy over to here because we're going to move out the uh, fake Sega blast and that's actually going out into the living room uh, around by the pool table and I think actually get a lot of use out there um, just for more sort of casual use out by the pool table so I think that will work really well and luckily my lovely wife has agreed to that plan so <laughs> that is what we're going to do so we'll get moving and uh, get this guy out of here and uh, we'll get the Neo Geo bring it over it will fit in there nicely outrun should look really nice in that corner there let's get going guys there we have it outrun is now in the theater and i'm pretty happy about that and listen it's been um it's actually been a couple of weeks uh since i moved it in here and i have actually been busy though with the machine so as i was saying in the car um when we first filmed the pcb wasn't included in the sale with the machine so i didn't have a pcb so what i did actually do is i went out and ordered a, a pcb off ebay finally found one um, but it was a non-worker but at least it actually said it played blind so usually with ebay auctions guys you know how it is you get the um the typical uh, uh untested <laughs> untested pcbs which means they are busted broken and will never work again probably 80 percent of the time anyway so it was good to sort of see one that said hey it's you know it's playing blind it's doing all the right sounds and stuff of course that still doesn't mean anything does it really <clears throat> so i thought i'd take a punt um i ended up having to bid against a couple of people where again i just think these these boards they don't seem to come up for some reason i'm Still not sure about that because um, such a popular game. But however, I, I have sort of noticed there's a bit of a design problem with them, and that is is that the two PCBs are sandwiched together with three, um, you know, 
three sockets effectively and there's no uh, ribbon cables between them so you know to actually get them apart you sort of have to prise the board apart the PCB and it can bend a little bit so I don't know maybe quite a few of them are uh, out of out of circulation out of action have been damaged um, not sure but anyway I ended up getting the, that board set in and um, I did do some tests guys and I didn't video all this stuff because Seriously, it was during the week. I was just absolutely knackered. <laughs> I couldn't string three words together in the in the evenings, and so I uh, I thought, well, at least I'll try and get some some progress going on the machine and give you guys an update on it. So I um, I got that PCB set, and then I'd actually gone out to Player One uh, last Friday, and uh, Michael was generous enough to to say, hey, if you want that PCB like his PCB set uh, to put in. In, in here just for the interim um, or help with some testing then you know go for it because when he went to put that PCB in to his new sit down uh, machine which was the replacement of course um, the controls didn't work and that was the problem that he was having with this machine is with that PCB the controls weren't working and he thought it was actually the control so he was pretty certain that it's actually the PCB at fault um, probably one of the controller chips on there that's causing it so he ended up actually maiming his uh, sit down at least for the moment just to get it running um, so yeah he had no use for the PCB he said take it and I thought well it's better to have a PCB in here running you know and at least have some sort of display happening um, while I waited for my one from uh, eBay to come across so anyway that all happened that all transpired had his in had the eBay one come in and then I thought okay well like, I'm in a position now where I can do a little bit of testing with the blind one however there are some issues guys so once I got Michael's uh, PCB in here I had a, a look at the cab and just sort of thought right what what have we got in terms of problems so the first thing that was evident and I knew this before anyway going into the purchase was that the um, the monitor uh, has lost its green gun for some reason so could it, it could be as simple as the connector although I've been trying to move around on the connector it doesn't seem to be anything on the connector itself if you go back to the super sprint series remember I lost one of the colors on the on the super sprint and that was actually just on the connector <laughs> it wasn't anything to do with anything else um, although the chassis got reserviced and all the rest of it but anyway I did test that um, there's also the possibility that there's uh, you know often on the neck boards they have um, you know a, a series of what were they transistors on there that um, that uh, deal with each of the colors and sometimes they they can go uh, and of course it could be on the chassis itself so unlikely that the tube has got some sort of fault there with that it's normally something to do with the chassis so anyway that's definitely a an issue the screen itself the actual tube looks like it's got a little bit of burden guys so um look i've got a, i've got a couple of spares now and i had a, a chassis done up recently um with a really nice uh tube and i think what i'm thinking of is i'm probably going to put that tube and that chassis in there and that'll be a, just a swap out and it will fix both of those issues so i'll certainly be doing that soon um, we have a marquee light at least uh, michael was kind enough to put one of those in before i picked it up he also sorted me out with the center outrun cap on the steering wheel because that was missing previously uh, and his good mate and um, uh, extraordinary uh, artwork guy julian uh, who does all his printing and um, aftermarket arcade uh, art he ended up printing that out so I picked that up often when I picked up the PCB so that's now installed in there so what else did we have as problems well as I said he would he had originally had issues with the controls so he had issues with the accelerator brake and the steering wheel and they all run off the uh, the pots or the pentiometers and so previously before he sort of went down this this whole journey of of uh, troubleshooting uh, and thinking about buying the the, the new sit-down game he had actually started going through a process of trying to resolve these these pots and, and I'm talking about these these are the pentiometers uh, little pots like this and they uh, they obviously turn on here and that will you know ax, uh, turn for the brake and you know, when you're pressing the pedal and and uh, and the accelerator and same thing with the steering wheel so 
he thought he had some problems with the pots, although it was a little bit unusual because, of course, all three pots were having uh, were being problematic. Now, I don't know the full history of all of that. So what he had done is he had wired up uh, basically three new pots in the cabinet and just had them hanging there, so he disconnected from the originals, which are still in there. Um, and he, yeah, he couldn't get anything to go. So I sort of, you know, I've, I've got the cabinet and it's got this sort of, this work done to it, but I don't really know the history and what's working and, and what's not. So I, anyway, I checked all the wiring. I did some continuity tests. Um, I checked that. I, in terms of the pots, they're quite easy to test. So um, for those of you who haven't tested a pot before, they normally have a rating on them. These are a, a 5K pot. Um, and basically 5,000 ohms is what it will register. So if you get a multimeter and just put it on either side of the end pins here on the uh, on the pot, then that will uh, read, it should read up to 5,000 or close to 5,000 or negative 5,000 if you've reversed it. And if it does that, it means that generally, you know, their range for the pot is good. Then what you can do is uh, put the uh, positive in the middle and a negative on the outside and you can turn it and as you turn it the multimeter will go from zero all the way up to 5000 so you can sort of see the full range of the resistance uh, as you turn the dial so that's a great way of quickly testing a pot now you have to do that test out of circuit uh, so what I could do with these ones here is they had some wires coming off to a connector I just unplugged the connector and then I could do those particular tests for the resistance You can't do it while it's in circuit because all the resistance changes and you won't get the right readings So that's the way you do that guys and the other test to do is just to make sure that this guy is actually getting the full uh, range of voltage that you're expecting to it and in this case we're expecting 5 volts to it so what you do then is you actually turn on the machine and then you can use the multimeter uh, in your voltage reading mode instead of the ohm reading mode which is how you would have done the other test so in the voltage reading mode you put it on there while the machine is on on either side and then you can see if you're getting uh, 5 volts uh, to it or not so yeah some, some good ways of testing that so I tested all those guys and they were in fact all good and uh, Joey from Joey Mac, you know, he gave me some tips on, on how to do all those tests. So again, thanks, Joey. Absolutely indispensable for assisting me in all my uh, troubles. Um, and he also suggested a, another test, which I couldn't actually do because I didn't have enough hands. And that was, um, and this is something that you guys can think of if you do have problems with pots and you've tested the pots, they're all sweet. What he said is you can basically um, take one of the pots and then follow the wires back to the PCB. And on the PCB where the, where the connection is, this will, this will be uh, the one from the middle will go to the PCB. The other ones will go off through to the power and off to the ground, right? So the middle one will go off to the PCB because that's the one that the PCB is reading in terms of the variation when the pot moves. I hope this all makes sense. Um, you can test that on the board um, with earth and you know with your multimeter and then when you turn your, your potentiometer then obviously the value should change and if it's not changing at the board level then perhaps you've got a problem with the PCB. Anyway I couldn't do that particular test uh, but I did do a continuity test to make sure there was no shorts so I tested this middle pin all the way to the power supply on 5 volts and I did that middle pin all the way onto earth as well just to make sure that it wasn't being grounded or it wasn't being shorted to 5 volts because that would have caused a problem as well uh, and it was all good so it seemed like all that wiring was okay now in the in the meantime of me testing all this guys I ended up going into the um, the test menu and I found an interesting thing because as soon as I hopped in the test menu the, um, the the arrow cursor and the menu was just scrolling down the screen and rolling around on the screen and that to me meant that it was reading some sort of uh, input uh, really because you're supposed to turn the steering wheel to make that arrow move on that screen So I thought that was curious Seems to be doing something Yet when I turned the pot while I was on that screen no change to the arrow It just kept going and round and round and round And another thing I found was that if I tried to press the start button to, to go into one of the tests Because I actually wanted to go into the input test guys just to see if uh, there was a problem there 
and I couldn't get in there um, with, the, with the start, but I found that if, if I flicked the t test switch again as the arrow came round, <laughs> then I would actually be able to get into the uh, input test, so that's how I got into that screen. And then when I was in there, I was able to test, uh, I tested obviously all the other buttons just to make sure they were okay, and the gear stick and uh, the start button was sweet. Um, I did have a problem with the coin uh, mechs. Both of the coin mechs were out, uh, which was interesting. And of course, they they do, they do tend to go. They get a lot of use uh, over the years, and they can just be left. So um, it was on free play, uh, but I think that's because Michael had problems with those uh, switches as well. Uh, so anyway, that wasn't a major concern, but the key thing on this screen, of course, was looking at the accelerator and the um, brake pedal and the steering wheel, and all of them were reading zero hex. And of course, they shouldn't be. <laughs> because I, because the pots that were all in there were all sitting sort of halfway, so they should have been reading sort of halfway between zero and, and 5,000. And of course, if I turned any of the pots, uh, I wasn't getting anything. So guys, it's just not not reading anything. Uh, all three pots down at once. Uh, doing all those tests seemed to... Seemed to it seemed to me that all the pots were okay and the wiring was okay. I don't think I've missed anything. Um, so I reported all that back to Joey and, uh, you know, we suspect that it, it really should be the board. And look, the other thing is, is Michael put this PCB in his uh, cockpit and he couldn't get the controls working that either. So, I mean, even just that. Clearly, you would think just on that on face value uh, th that there's the problem. It's on the PCB. I just wanted to go through for myself, guys. I, I do recommend this. You know, if if you pick up something and you get a bit of history on something, it's not a bad idea just to you know go through it yourself and and know what's happened to it and what changes have been done you might find something that someone else didn't pick up or someone may have assumed something or um, skipped over something or whatever it might be it's just difficult to diagnose something if you haven't gone through the steps yourself so anyway guys that was a bit of a long story to get through all that testing um, but it was certainly necessary to to do all that and now the situation is, is both boards are back with Joey. Now, I actually did try the uh, put in the uh, the set that I got from eBay, and sure enough, it did seem to play blind. However, I had a problem because the other issue with this cabinet is that there was no sound, <laughs> so there was no sound either. Uh, fine on on Michael's board, no good on a board that plays blind because you sort of really need the sound to determine if it's working or not and I had no sound. So all I got was the start button flashing when I first powered it up, uh, but that's a good sign, logic is happening and I pressed the start button and the start light went out so I gathered the game started. <laughs> I couldn't see it, I couldn't hear it. So. That was a bit of a, a bit of a, a lost cause. But what I did do is I then swapped the two boards because it's got the CPU board on the top, the video board on the bottom. So I swapped those between the ones of Michael's because Michael's are good. Put that in and sure enough it came up. Um, there was a bit of graphics, slight graphics corruption which would be caused by the CPU board on the eBay uh, on purchase. So it's not just plain blind, there is actually some other sort of logic problem happening from the CPU. So I'm sure Joey will find that hopefully. And, uh, and yeah, sure enough it came up. But again, because I had no sound, um, uh, I, and, and because the bottom board controls the controls with the video, I still didn't have any controls. Now, I, you know, again, that's no, that's not conclusive that it's still that board because it's just the same test effectively. So anyway, guys, I, I didn't really get far with that as you can probably understand. So. Both board sets are with Joey. He's going to have a look at them and hopefully he'll fix them both. And if he fixes them both, uh, then I will give that board back to uh, Michael and uh, he will have a fixed board and he can put that back into his, um, his sit-down unit. And he'll be happy and I'll be happy, hopefully, if my board's going to. And we shall have a working out run. Now, with the sound, what a bizarre situation with that guy. So I looked at the sound and look, I'm not familiar with this setup at all. You've got to remember, right? I'm, I didn't know really all the connectors and all the rest of it for this particular setup. You always learn these things first off. And... And I know Michael said he had issues with the sound and whatnot, and I clearly wasn't getting any. Um, so anyway, when I checked in the back there next to the PCB, it's quite obvious that there is a Sega um, uh, sound amplifier to the left-hand side of that, that board. 
and I did a little bit of searching on the internet and it showed the pinouts uh, for the connectors on there and the one connector that actually goes off to the outrun PCB that's where the sound comes from from the from the outrun PCB on a, on a specific four pin connector that was on a five pin header jammed on the four pin <laughs> socket on the amp which was odd so I sort of pulled that off and then it only had like three wires coming in it should have four for both you know the positive and negative for left and right stereo speakers uh, and so I only had three in there and one half wire was hanging out and it, was, it looked like a real dog's breakfast but the really bizarre thing guys was following that down because I thought well that's the bottom part of that's got to be in the cabin I'll be able to you know if I could get the wiring fixed I could plug it into the into the PCB and get sound well I couldn't because it was jammed down the down the bottom of the outrun cabinet <laughs> what the hell so it was like I couldn't even pull it out. Like I had a screwdriver. I was trying to actually dig the thing out. It was jammed, wedged in the back. And I, I couldn't work it out. I did actually see Michael again, and I and I asked him about it, and he he didn't know because he actually had run sound directly off the PCB and was running it through another sound system, because those outrun boards guys just have a low. Uh, um, low sound output uh, from those pins so you can you know reamplify them with some other amp that's what he did so anyway a mystery <laughs> mystery that's every time guys you find these really strange quirky things you've got to look at it you've got to challenge it you go why is that should it be like that no it shouldn't <laughs> so out it came and uh, so i'm hoping to get it's just a four four pin header uh, cable and i'm hoping to pick one of those up from joe when i pick up the board so when i do guys i will have a working board hopefully i will have the connect right connection for sound and hopefully the amp is working it's all sweet uh, and i would have changed the monitor over and um, yeah, and we will have controls and the game should be running beautifully. That's the hope. So look out in the future guys for that episode. Um, that'll be a lot of fun because I'm itching to you know get on here and play this. I've been playing a few games down um, at Player One, but the, uh, the only issue down at Player One at the moment is Michael hasn't got the sound fully rigged up uh, down there either on his main box so it's actually quite hard to play without sound it's like you know trying to run Daytona uh, such an awesome game you turn the sound off on that game and it just you, know, you just lose the feel you, you, in a driving game you need to hear what's going on you need to hear the tires and all the rest of it I know it's not a sim <laughs> guys it's not a simulation but uh, I don't know it's just you need that full thing and it gives so much more immersion it's more fun so anyway guys look out for that one um, again uh, as I say uh, in pretty much every video yes there is still tons more going on and I do apologize for missing last Friday um, remember that <laughs> I don't want to make this a job or a chore for myself so if I'm just knackered then I will miss a, uh, a week uh, here and there but uh, I'm always keen to get one out every Friday when I can and I'm able to so please stick with us and uh, if you haven't subscribed please subscribe if you like the video give it a good uh, thumbs up please um, certainly comment let me know your thoughts uh, I love receiving comments I don't always respond to them straight away but I will respond to them when I get around to it when I have time which is slipping away on me at this present point in time. Um, but uh, yeah, please, uh, please do comment and um, really do look forward to seeing you at uh, the next video. And gosh, yeah, there's some cool stuff. <laughs> cool stuff coming, that's all I'm gonna say. So until then, make sure you fix your games. Spend the time on it, guys. I know it's difficult, you know, I, I struggle during the week and you know, I. I, to be honest, I really feel like if, if I'm not having to set up to video, because it just takes so much more effort and time to do that, I probably would have fixed a lot more in here. Um, but, you know, I'm trying to document this as much as I can to help you guys out where I can and, and you know, and just document the journey. So I'm sort of taking my time. But for you guys out there that have got, you know, half an hour here and 20 minutes there and sitting in your PJs and want to, you know, pull out a screwdriver and rip into one of your games, go ahead and do it. <laughs> There's no reason why you shouldn't do that. And then you can uh, get all your, 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 your games running and enjoy them and play them and all that good stuff, guys. So until next time, I know I've been rambling on here, but until next time, uh, take care of yourself. And of course, ciao for now. You must continue. You can do it. 
You are amazing. The theater is now closed.